I guess we'll get started. This will be another podcast of Libertarian Crusaders. We're your hosts, uh, Cal Maloney. John Kennedy. Kurt Bivens. And today on the podcast, we have Iran and the droning incident. Um, I guess the question everybody wants to know is, when should we nuke Iran? <laughs> right, that's the one that's on, a, on the tip of everyone's tongue. Right. right. Um, I mean, let me let me say something, though. Nuking Japan, right? Look where they are today. A lot more peaceful. They're not conquering China, right? They're not harassing their neighbors. Uh, their cities look much better than, like, Detroit, for example, right? I do a side-by-side comparison. It looks like nuking them and stopping their suicide attacks did a lot to benefit them. One could say, <laughs> one could say, maybe a way to end how they ended kamikaze suicide bombers from Japan, you can end these uh, Muslim fanatic suicide bombers by nuking them and then showing that if you want to play bombs, we have bombs to play as well, and then that would cease. I haven't heard of a kamikaze attack since, have you? Well, I think what you have with Japan, though, is similar to a lot of those European countries in after World War II. They, after World War One and World War Two, they lost a lot of their best, you know, most manly guys mm. in this war. And so now you have all these Japanese guys who are looking at porn all day and playing video games. Oh, and wow. They're completely uninterested in, in girls. Huh. And so that to me is like a, it's, it's a consequence of that, regardless of, I mean, the, well, like the, the nukes basically killed a lot of, you know, women and children. So I don't even think that had an effect, really. I think it was the war itself that, that really did a man. It killed off, uh, I guess, the bravest, uh, the strongest. That's generally what a war does. And then you're left with your country to be run by the weak and ill-minded. Um, and then they allow for, like, I guess, all these other policies to kind of just snake its way through. Hmm. Japan is having problems economically. That's very yeah. true. Yeah. Well, in the nineties, the nineties, they had the lost decade, which was an entire economic, just entire wasted decade. They had terrible inflation, horrible economic policy. Hmm. Yeah. And Abe was gonna. He was speaking to the Ayatollah Khomeini or, or whatever his name is. During this whole fiasco, initially with the ship being attacked um, by somebody, and it's not even clear yet who did it, um, the U.S. government seemed to know from like before it happened that the U.S. government knew who did it. Right? Did you hear about? Um, they found, I guess, Obama's advisors talking to Iran intelligence, telling them how to defeat U.S. foreign policy. Um, there's like pictures of them kind of together, and you know. I guess things to kind of undermine it. There is a lot of money to be made, um, for sure. There's no denying that there's always status quo figures like embedded with these <clears throat> CIA operatives, like uh, the Bin Ladens and the guy that run ISIS. John McCain had a picture with him at one point. Yeah, who stands to benefit? Israel, right? <laughs> <laughs> The, you, the warfare machine. Yeah, the, 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 the contractors. The, yeah. Did you have, um, I didn't really look into it, but this is what the memes are kind of putting out there today with um, that Ben, the small guy, what's his last name? Oh, ben, ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about him saying that uh, it's that that's not the proper response to a uh, drone that was befelled. It's worth like, what, $200 million or something like that. Um and I guess maybe the appropriate attack response would be to attack. Oh, but right. he's got more gold and sheets to sell. Right. Um, <laughs> and right, coming from a guy who says, like, it's okay to give billions of dollars to uh, <laughs> Israel. Right. right. Yeah. Um, I think I thought I saw a great line on uh, social media where they were saying, you know, just have Ben Shapiro go up against Iran's best guy, like in Troy, you know, where Brad Pitt <laughs> yeah. goes against that big dude. <laughs> and uh, nobody else has to fight. We'll right. just, that'll settle it, right? If there. you got, if you feel the need to advocate for it, why don't you, like, put some skin in the game? <laughs> I saw a GoFundMe for trying to raise $2,500 to get Ben Shapiro to go out there and give him an AR. And <laughs> <laughs> well, how much did he offer AOC to debate him? I can't remember. Right. 10000 10, 10, yeah. to a charity, yeah. I think? Mm-hmm. 
Bob Murphy has something with that with um, Paul Krugman, I right? Think. I think it was like ten thousand dollars, and the ten thousand dollars was raised, and it'll be released to like a food charity bank if the debate occurs. And I'm, you know, it's trying to say that you don't care about, I guess, starving people, right? If you want to debate, this is money that could go and help you. Uh, but it never happened. No matter how many libtards he owns <laughs> on YouTube, it's like it doesn't matter. It all goes away as soon as he makes one post about like, oh, I support this thing in the Middle East against Iran. And, you immediately, everything comes back into focus. And you're like, oh, right. That's like the kind of guy he is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think um, the drone was in international airspace or in Iran's airspace? So or does it matter? What's the, I think the, the, the altitude that this drone can fly is like between 60,000 and 80,000 feet. So if they didn't want it to be shot down, it wouldn't have been. That's what I think. Hmm. Interesting. I mean... These are built to... They're surveillance drones, right? So yeah. they're meant to be where they're not seen at all times. Uh, yeah, they they would not be cruising at an altitude that could be shot down if they didn't want it to be. $100 million drone? Or $150 million? <laughs> yeah, I think, million like, 100, yeah, I think like 100, 100 who million. Even, who even, like, once you start getting to those numbers, it's like, who cares? Is that worth, like, 124 <laughs> people lives? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um... Well, I mean, you know, $10 million is typically the value, you know. Would the U.S. Companies. shoot down a drone that was flying near its borders itself? Like if Iran sent, a, if North Korea sent a drone <laughs> to go along the coast of California, <laughs> would the U.S. shoot it down? Instantly. Without question. Right. And it, would just be, it would be grounds for, for war. It's right. amazing how... But all cultures are equal. <laughs> all right. All right. Right. It's amazing how calm how Iran has been, given like all the provocations that are routinely thrown at them. I mean, it I, it is weird because they're supposed to be these terrible guys, and yet uh, the axis of evil. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. I do have a friend that uh, left there with his parents, came here, and talked about how horrible and backwards uh, it is over there in Iran. Uh, it's like, oh gosh, the West is the best. Um, so that's good to hear from from his perspective from that. Uh, I don't know if, I guess if, it seems too easy to go into war with Iran. I think it's, Iraq is still fresh in people's minds. I think Obama was trying to go into Syria, uh, I think like the last year of his presidency and people were like vehemently opposed to it and it never happened. I mean, they drone strike Syria, but they didn't no put any boots on, boots the, ground. on the ground. Right. right. Uh, yeah, when we compare, we, we have things so good here. And if people could just put into context, like, how much money goes into funding these wars and getting people over there and, and like, that, these people getting killed, it's like, why can't we just enjoy the wonderful quality of life we have and let Iran, the people who live there, like, yeah, if, they, if, it's, if life sucks over there, then let it suck for them and we can stay. <laughs> what if they want to, what, what is the dangers of them having a nuclear weapon? Israel is the main, is right. the main issue for them and for Israel. And Israel has a zillion nukes. They can <laughs> right. take them out of Israel if they wanted to. I don't know. And, and they're only enriching to 10%, uh, uh, supposedly. So that's not um, nuclear bomb grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're only doing it because we backed out of the, of the Obama agreement. The, but they're still in this agreement with a bunch of European nations. So, pretty much true. Obama gave them money so they don't build a new pretty much, right? I think Obama <laughs> released the money that was already theirs. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, how fast do you think we could win this war? I don't think it would be... We don't win wars. A cakewalk. <laughs> right? yeah, <I laughs> well, think. the battle, right? And then everything is like... Oh, yeah, well, then it's a continual occupation. Yeah. No, I don't that think part sucks. I don't yeah. think it's going to be... Oh, no. The U.S. military could win anywhere virtually anywhere if they were willing to do things that are completely like opposed to human you know humanity right yeah um like the uh iraq war and stuff like that or like it was like done in days um you have uh israel when it's fighting all its neighbor it was like the six-day war for them knocked out like 10 islamic states or something like that um i guess that'd be something if our u.s did do that i could imagine uh, Israel joining in on that, probably. Yeah, without a doubt. All right. Now, what stops them, Israel, from just attacking on their own? Because they've done that, right? 
I think that is typically an issue that the United States is always trying to hold them back right. to keep them from doing that. Like, no, 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 hang on, little bro, we got this. Mm. And then they—that's it. Always seems to be the the plan. Like, well, you don't want Israel to attack because if Israel attacks, you, you you're, get you're gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it becomes your territory becomes greater Israel now. Right? No, uh, no, they'll suddenly they'll take over the entire Middle East. Right. So. <laughs> It'll all be one big settlement so, system. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I think, uh, Trump deserves giving himself an award. It's like, uh, the meme, where, you know, kinda, <laughs> it's a picture of him and he kind of, right, yeah. where well, he stopped a war from happening from one that he gave, uh, I guess, initiation to do, right? And then he stopped in 10 minutes short of that. He does have a big ego, but I imagine, I hope he doesn't break his arm jerking himself off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that... If whatever it takes to stroke his ego, to be like, you did a good job, <laughs> Donald. Like, You're doing it. No yeah, war. you avoided that war and saved a bunch of lives. Keep it up. If that's all it takes, like, great. You know? Yeah. It's better than having a uh, Mike Pence, you know. Right. I can see him going in there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> uh, what do you think that it would keep in the tradition of the Crusades, though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so next thing we have up is uh, technocracy. Technocracy. Uh, technocracy. Right? Yeah. So the thing that Iran doesn't have is a central bank. And uh, vital for the technocracy is to organize and uh, prioritize and lay out all the resources that every country has. And a central bank is pretty instrumental in uh, moving that forward. You think the petrodollar is related to this issue? I'm assuming you know about that. Just it's well, it's pretty much all oil countries. It's linked to right, and yeah. Iran rejected it, and they at one point sold their oil for gold. So this was uh, a I thing know. that the U.S. didn't really like much. So kind of like a uh, Gaddafi trying to right. uh, create his own. Uh, like banking system or something. Or, yeah, yeah. His own it's almost a one-to-one correlation based <laughs> on like these guys who tried to opt out of the petrodollar, like selling their oil in dollars. The how quickly they get invaded or, or <laughs> disrupted by the United right? States government. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't believe in many conspiracy theories, but that's definitely one that I. Totally I guess believe I could see why Iran would want a nuke uh, option to defend themselves just in case. Right. All right. It's like, look, if you do it, we just press the button, we're all going to die. A mutually assured destruction. Yep. Um, a deterrence, if you will. Right. Because all they have to do, I imagine, is just launch it at Israel. Israel launches back, and then the whole Middle East is a radioactive wasteland. Um, so, technocracy, in terms of... Um, do you think that's kind of what we have then now? Uh, I think it's being implemented in certain ways. Like, uh, they're trying to scientifically manage the resources Uh a society that is run by scientists and engineers for the betterment of humanity. So only people that are productive get resources. And mostly what your money is going to be based off of is energy. So you get energy credits, like your carbon credits. This is kind of like the global warming agenda. There's many prongs to this, uh, a plan going into play. So like Zeitgeist. Kind of. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Exactly. Yeah. Just communist robotic overlords. Yeah. Yeah. It's increasingly becoming obvious though. Like there is a there is a problem with online discussions being being taken over by, you know, Google and, and Facebook and Apple. So at at what point is it yes, the government grants free expression, but these guys, in effect, are stifling and censoring free right. speech. Not part of our platform anymore. So what about when these people are the ones controlling the network that your fridge is connected to and you're like, say something bad and they turn your fridge off? Yeah. With, le- with Facebook, leader <laughs> your, your washing machine, because it's connected to it the It shows internet. that you posted an Alex Jones article <laughs> from InfoWars, and it's like, yeah, sorry. You weren't critical of him. Right. You were neutral. Snoop so. said, uh, <laughs> you're in jail for 15 days. <laughs> Turns your electricity off. And yeah, instead of real, uh, 
you know, court cases, you end up with like a Snopes jury. Of, right. Of writers from Vox or, or whatever, of Tumblr writers <laughs> telling you like what well, you you offended a number right. of people with that post. Their I, feelings were hurt. <laughs> I just want to be able to call out if that were to happen, call out, that's a kangaroo court. And just kind of... <laughs> You've always wanted to say that. I always that. wanted to say that. <laughs> I almost did at my own court. <laughs> and the cop was lying. I was like, ah, no. Uh, right. your, your lawyer just <laughs> slept. <laughs> and the court reporter would have to type it in. Yeah, there's, there's definitely an element of wondering, I, at least in my own experience, like, how can you opt out of, of this huge system? You know, at what point can you almost financially secede from uh, this, these online, like, like I noticed you don't uh, participate in a lot of social media, you know, websites, because for, for good reason, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's avoiding getting entangled in that, in that control. Yeah, so I, I was on them for quite a while, but I wanted to maximize my productivity. So I looked at the things that were, I was spending my time versus investing my time. And I, this was, it was obvious that that was something that I was spending way too much time on. So I found more productive things to do with my time. How do you uh, get your memes? <laughs> that is kind of a difficult situation, right? I do have a couple lifelines, okay, but uh, <laughs> it's not always easy. You have a meme dealer, nice, right? Yeah. Like, I actually found uh, an open source meme creator, right? Like, show you that off air, but uh, so <laughs> I'm interested in becoming more of a producer than a consumer. So maybe putting more of my own memes out there versus. Uh, just consuming all the memes all the time. Yeah, I think that's like, in general, in life, when you think about being an employee versus being an owner of a company, or, you know, you think, oh yeah, like it's it's very scary to be that guy who's, who branches out and becomes the one who's got more risk and you're not taking a salary or whatever, but it's it's also there's way more upside. So, I think for, uh, if you have a business, you kind of have to get on there. You kind of have to, it's like... Uh, it's not a real business unless you have a website. Uh, people look at websites, uh, and if it's like from the '90s, there's some website out there that hasn't been updated. Looks really bad. Um, <laughs> Drudge, right? Yeah. yeah. But a Facebook page is, a, I guess, comparable, easy one anyone can have. Right. Um, so I can see for making money reasons and networking, and I think you're right. Some people do get consumed by it. I think uh, they make a lot of stranger friends, and then their whole feed is kind of blowing up with all kinds of stuff. Um, no denying, because I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw a statistic recently that uh, 80% of ads are now on Google and Facebook. So, Sometimes I just think wow. about it, and it just shows up. Right, yeah. Say, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Weird, huh? They know, like, they know what you post, you've typed on Google recently, mm -hmm. so they're they're saying, okay, he's, he's interested in buying some motorcycle gear again, right. you know, which is the 12th time this year. So they, Maybe they listen, maybe they can have a... <laughs> The voice setting uh, on. Okay. Track Trace Database Society, unfortunately. Maybe they know from, they've already put you in an algorithm from all your search interests, and then they can kind of predict what your next interest will be and kind of show that. Kind of like um, the movie uh, Deuce, Deus Ex Machina. Have you guys seen that? With, uh, the, not yet. The robot. The robot. Yeah. So the way he made a robot was like indexing all of um, the search. Uh, algorithms on uh, Google and everything and getting everybody, I guess, the way how they view the world and their intelligence and just upload it to his computer and that's how the computer is able to have uh, AI. Um, hmm. But I don't think Google and stuff like that are that far ahead. Yeah, that sounds like that 4chan uh, thing where Microsoft tried to create a Twitter account and 4chan trolled it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the same <laughs> <bunch of> <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. But at the same time, uh, I don't mind being uh, catered to stuff that I like. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I like that stuff. I'll go ahead and buy it. Well, uh, discernment and responsibility are the key. Like, you have to look at the ad and see, like, why is this trying to serve to me based on emotions? Or is this, like, a need I have? And that's personal responsibility is to right. be able to look at something and not just jump to a conclusion. But, uh, you know make a decision about it. 
Well, like last week we talked about parenting and discipline, or uh, not parenting, but like schools and discipline and and the way that a lot of this stuff works is you wonder about kids and the way they're looking at, at different like iPads and stuff. How much of this is kind of manipulating their choices long term and what do they value versus not value? And if that has a rainbow on the logo of this corporation, how, you know, oh, right. well, it's just normal then. So. It's not like a Mother's Day um, graphic saying Happy Mother's Day, but it's a kid saying it to like his iPad. Because, like, the iPad is not pretty much in charge of the kid and what it's watching, like, babysitting the kid and um, instead of doing anything else. Uh, so you think Libra coin is part of the uh, technocracy? Oh, I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's already linked into, you know, your Ubers, your Airbnbs, all these companies that just very early emerged. Onto Why can't you just be a good NPC, Kurt? Uh, to conform. <laughs> Just check out and check out, <laughs> check out Libra <laughs> <Right>. coin. <laughs> well, when you don't even have Facebook, you know, it doesn't really work for you. Hmm. Right. Yeah. I like, I think about just like the Amish or, or living like that anyway, being like, wow, I'm so free. Like that would be, that would be kind of an invigorating feeling, not having to check into whatever. So some random person you met 12 years ago is what vacation they're going on or, or whatever. Right. <laughs> Look at it. Their technology hasn't advanced, though. Yeah. All right. So they don't even know what's going on. They're still using... Uh... I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they still eat good. <laughs> yeah, they're like healthy. Do they have AC still? They're not drinking this this filth. <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do they have AC units? I don't think so, right? Or some of the like, crazier ones don't. But... Right? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I don't know about that. They ride the train. I know that. They do? Yeah. 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 Because that was in like 1880 or whatever right. they, their cutoff line was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Wow. Huh. Like what if like Good they did them. that and the cutoff time was like the 90s with Game Boys? It's like, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> uh, some people some people are doing <laughs> you know, like the, the hairstyles are yeah. cut off too. <laughs> <laughs> that ugly mushroom haircut that they give to kids. Bowl oh, cut. Yeah. It is. Um, technocracy. Have a, have a bowl cut. Yeah, so AOC was talking about, she created a firestorm. Uh, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, as everyone knows. Uh, she was talking about concentration camps. She's week. a wild woman. She said, this administration has established concentration camps on the southern border of the United States for immigrants where they're being brutalized, brutalized, with dehumanizing conditions and dying. I haven't heard anyone really today, like, dying in mass a over there i think like being like lined up on a wall and yeah and shooting them yeah or, or gassed have, <laughs> or, or anything Martian, like that yeah. or having like their goatee kind of to the... just torn out of their <laughs> mouth right um now yeah, or i don't i don't know about work, that work to the bone work to death right well, well i mean yeah, a lot of these yeah. people across the border are kind of overweight anyways when you see some of these pictures so like it doesn't <laughs> look like they're you know if you're thinking like there's these concentration camps these death camps right there on the border you don't like walk towards that direction all right. And, you know, in a sense, it's crazy how um, none of this phases them when they're talking about government solutions to problems. So, mm -hmm. like, these are government, this is a government solution to a problem. So let's, instead of having, like, this government do this, let's create uh, private, you know, solutions to immigration instead. But no, that, no, that's terrible. Like, you can't suggest that. I look at this as problems of uh, government keeping open borders, because that's what you have down there is open borders. Because it's not closed. Right. Uh, because it's open, you have all these kind of situations. Um, people were, nine out of ten women who try to make that trek get raped by uh, other Mexicans. Um, so I think uh, them knowing that you, you couldn't, you can't make it, that will kind of certainly put a stop to people putting their kids in danger, crossing, making that trek, and uh, putting them in situations where... Uh, their parents abandoned them and other people pick them up. They, they do like some blood tests and they find like, this is not your kid. Yeah. Right. I mean, they take it so they could get the appeal. It's like, look, this is my kid. You know, you have to take me in. Right. Oh, right. Um, so, you know, it's like, where's the, their moral responsibility on that? Right. It's put on everyone else, but not onto the hands uh, or the minds or embodied of these people actually who are doing this sort of stuff. 
Um, there is a funny thing in response to Cortez of, uh, ho- I guess, descendants of Holocaust survivors sent her... Uh, yeah, at Vashem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they responded. They were saying... Um, I don't know if that's... They want, invite, well, I think, well, they want to invite her to, uh, to tour multiple Nazi concentration camps uh, with one of the camp's survivor. So they sent her a letter. Uh, there's a 93-year-old Holocaust survivor and wow. wants to take him to Mauthausen and Auschwitz, uh, Birkenau and Mazdanik uh, and some other places that are death camps and show her what those places actually really look like. I bet she ignores them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She, and, what, she does. A, uh, she should do the Trump response. Like, who cares? She totally <laughs> ignored the internment camps in the United States, right? Right. The one that um, that uh, their hero FDR. Right. right. Uh, which is kind of weird because you have what's that Star Trek character, George Takek? Takei. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he's part of the same party though. I think, but T- his Takek is he, good, is better though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He was in an internment camp, yeah. Was he? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was him or his father. When he was a kid. Right. But, you know, quickly how he goes back to his abusers and the very same party that kind of put him in there, right? Yeah, there's never a voice in these discussions about, hey, the whole thing is a problem. The whole idea that the government can funnel you through a camp and uh, you just have to do it, even if somebody asks you to come here and work for them or something. Like, it's all all a crazy... uh, Right. And no, but there's no voice for that. Not even from like the Libertarian Party. You know? Right. <laughs> now, I guess what, how would you define what kind of camps would those be? Would those be just detainment camps, I guess? FDRs? Yeah. Internment camps. Internment camps, right? yeah. Because he went out and he rounded them up. Mm-hmm. And so like the ones at the border, those people are actively crossing a <laughs> barrier. Right. And, you're, and there's always been internment camps throughout history, I guess, like, uh, Lincoln did internment camps for people in Maryland because he was not going to give up Maryland to the South because it was a southern state. Suspended habeas corpus and everyone went to internment camps. Um, so there's that's it has a historical I precedent. Mean, and just imagine like going into Mexico. Like I can't imagine trying to do that without having a passport and going through the port of entry or whatever and like talking to a soldier, you know, with a gun. Like I don't, I I just can't imagine doing that. And yet, there's so many people who do that with us, with this country. And uh, I'm not saying it's like, you know, the borders are the best, are, are this great innovation. But, geez, like, at least from a practical perspective, you know. Yeah. Um, I would want there to be borders even if there wasn't a state. There's a lot of uh, yeah. people who think, like, no borders. It's like, even if there wasn't a state, we still have borders. Private borders. Private borders. Yeah, you know, I have borders on my property. You have your gated community. Those are borders. Um, it seems like, uh, people have forgotten about, like, there are things that would exist in the real and Kapistan world, yeah. uh, outside of the state. And just because the state has them like a monopoly on security, that's maybe we don't want security sort of thing, right? Right. Um, but yeah, I think she's a loose cannon sometimes when she talks. She was doing this in one of the, like, Instagram real talk sort of <sighs> conversations. She says the most heinous things. She- <laughs> she's the Trump of the Democrats, man. Yeah. And she'll just say whatever. Just Streisand effect. Just blow it out there. All right. She's got those glasses on, and it's just like, could nobody hook you up with a better pair of frames? Like, right. with that federal health insurance plan <laughs> you got? Like... <laughs> so, speaking of, uh, I guess, gun, well, border stuff, there's, um, or border police. The police in Oregon have been sent out to arrest uh, Republicans, uh, 11 Republican senators, because they haven't shown up to make a vote. And the vote is supposed to be on uh, some kind of cap and trade climate plan. So some kind of you know BS thing that's going to raise the prices for gasoline for like the rural people. And so that's why these Republicans are saying like they're going to live in under more hardship. This is not going to help anyone. Yep. So even though the Democrats outnumber the Republicans, 18 to uh, 12, you need 20 people in there for the to, t- to have a vote. And so 11 Republicans like, well, I guess uh, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is like when voting become it becomes obvious, like we really want an outcome. We don't care about. You know, and, the, and it's in the Republicans in this case. They're like, right. they don't care about voting or, or majority rule. They just want they want the right outcome. And right. That's irrespective of like 
how many Democrats or Republicans are in office, you know. They did say that they did not want it to be uh, uh, ruled by the tyranny of the majority. Some of them saying that yeah. in regards to uh, the Democrats. Um, so they're not showing up. Some are like next door state in Idaho. <laughs> There's one uh, Republican that said something to the effect of, uh, like, they're sending cops, like, I'm not running away. I'm not, I'm not hiding. If you're going to send cops, you know, make sure you bring uh, a lot of bullets. Ruby Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right up in northern Idaho. All right. Now, what do you think of that as an interesting, uh, like, if the Libertarian Party ever did something like that, as an effect to kind of stall votes or passing legislation? Right. I would think that would be the, the only reason to have that type of party is just to in, just to um, up what is it just to cause problems within the voting structure it's like a filibuster. There was right? recently in yeah. Virginia in Hanover um, in near us. There was this guy who there was two guys who ran for the Republican um, nomination. One who supported like Medicaid expansion or something, and one who ran against him specifically because of that because he that guy supported it, and so they they both got nominated to the Republican local. Uh, state Senate election. And, uh, it became this whole hullabaloo and, uh, question of democracy and, oh, it's, it's so horrible that some people didn't get their votes counted. But at the end of the day, the guy who opposed Medicaid expansion won. And it's like, that's all anybody really wanted. Right. Is that outcome? Because it doesn't matter if, if a majority of people support robbing a bunch of other people. At the end of the day, we're happy if, the right thing happened. <laughs> right. Uh, these pragmatic outcomes and the session is supposed to end, I think, like uh, this month or I think it's supposed to be end this month. So like the voting session is like, so they, they just have to hold off for like another week or two. <laughs> yeah. To stifle the process. <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> if only they would all do that all the time. Right. right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Like these, I think we have way too many laws here. I right. think we're done. Right. Yeah. Right. We're done. I mean, Ron Paul was like the, the guy who, and one of the only politicians in the United States in like history who was able to just vote no on virtually everything. Right. As a, as more of a protest vote. And, and so <laughs> there is that interesting thing that Trump has where for every, uh, I guess legislation, you have to remove two regulations out or something like that. Yeah, um, I don't know if he's kept to that. I'm, I haven't looked into that. I've, I've heard it. it's been okay. keeping up to that. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, now, this is causing an uproar with people in Oregon. There's like militias going out there. They had to shut down the, the Capitol building, uh, fearful of a militia uprising. Right. And uh, they're promising like protection for these Republicans. And you now I'm thinking that... If there is to be a civil war, right? Some of the stuff is inevitable. Seems like that in Oregon. Uh, I wouldn't. I would make a conflict. I wouldn't. Civil war is like strong, but I think there will be pockets of conflict. Absolutely, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess civil war. Trying to get over this day, I think these people just want to be left alone. Right. Yeah. If you had to compare our situation today to the way it was before the civil war, so like. It, it, I would almost say we're like in 1820 and we have another maybe 40 years to go before the things like all these current conflicts that are brewing, which seem like they're just insurmountable, are eventually going to come to the point where it's and we're, we're going to be old farts by that time. So I mean, I'll have my seven kids by then. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be our old farts. It's like, all right, well, you know what? Let's uh, go out with the bang and let's go to Oregon and uh, <laughs> help these people out. <laughs> Say some kind of um, Mel Gibson speech. <laughs> <laughs> but back during the Civil War, people were segmented much easier. Interstate travel wasn't near as easy. Right now, people are fleeing all over the place, so they're making pockets. They're, they're gonna be, so there's like, the contrast usually is the city centers versus the more rural areas. There's uh, mostly more well armed. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. On the bulk of the guns. And uh-huh. so, you know, you never, city centers, they're going to be at their limits to impose their will at some people to decide that they're over it. And they're already already having most of these uh, liberal cities turf wars with local gangs and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, they're going to find they're not getting funding. They're fighting their, their own local gangs. Uh, and then they have like uh, the rural people out there. It's like, 
like very easy win, I think, uh, especially most of them are very anti-gun and find it to be a PTSD experience to hold one. Right. Um, <laughs> most of, uh, like they say, well, they'll send in the military, but I can't really imagine uh, if it's like a conservative versus liberal sort of thing. Yeah. Most people in the military are conservative, but they're not going to fire back. No. Yeah. The, um, I mean, I'm sure some would, but I always picture... Like Godfather Two, Vito Corleone, he's going against the. Have you guys ever watched that? Um, basically, the the gist is he's like a small time guy from Italy. He's just making his way in the United States. He kind of spots that this big shot mob mobster in like circa nineteen twenties New York is not doesn't have a lot of support. He doesn't have a lot of soldiers at his back. And this guy asks Vito Corleone. He says, "Do you want to? Yeah, you, know, you want to work for me? You want to be a soldier?" And so from that, Vito figures out that uh, this guy doesn't have any support. He doesn't have any soldiers. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the problem with, like, city centers, liberals. Yeah. They don't have any soldiers. Like, yeah. they, they don't have any kind of... Uh, th their entire culture is relying upon the system continuing right. to, the way it is. All they have is uh, fake rape accusations, <laughs> um, tweets that someone made 20 years ago. Right. Boy who cried wolf right. syndrome. It'll run uh, thin pretty quick. And yeah, they, that's that's all the bite they have, and I think they've already used up all their wild cards up to now. Like uh, thinking like this stuff can stop people, like especially in the Kavanaugh case, they used up all their wild cards. You have uh, even uh, Smullett smelling things up, right? <laughs> Creating a fake racist racist attack, right? Um, people kind of seeing through that um, that there isn't really this uh, entrenched uh, racism going on, right? That they're trying to justify their policies and their, their politics. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I think they're out of bite for the most part. And if things do escalate in Oregon, uh, yeah. I don't think it would turn out pretty for them. Uh, there's two states in Oregon, right? I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's, they, they want to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's just like, and right. you, could just, you could just draw a line right down the middle of the state. All right. I think there's a movement to try to create a separate. Uh, free state of Oregon or something like that, right? I have heard this, yeah. Right. Um, was it, I support? Yeah. yeah. It's weird how there's like a North Carolina and a North Dakota and South Dakota. And, and yet today we would never dream of doing that, you know, with our, our current states. Right. If there was a, another Bundy situation in Oregon, because this is like Bundy town, Bundy yeah. land, right? Badlands, Bundy lands. Um, I mean, I could see something like that coming up again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will go. We can make a field trip for like a weekend going out there. <laughs> to just take a weekend, right? Like Ron, like Everything's good. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> Selfies. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe tell them like, no, don't take over that forever building because now they have justification to shoot back, right? right? That's where they messed up when they took over um, the national Wild park. Wild refuge. Right. Now <laughs> they can say they're trespassing, mm -hmm. right? Now they have a, a way to have an argument against them. Right? But even then, a lot of those weren't a lot of those convictions thrown out. They were thrown out, right? Yeah. Which means that them shooting uh, one of them would amount to murder. Yeah. Right. Which they'll never be held accountable for. I imagine. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're they've had this long. I mean, they have. A, there's a lot of like groups like that where there's so many libertarian or good uh, justifications for them being libertarians. You know, like. That whole land use out there. I mean, you you grew up in like Nebraska. I guess the West is is uh is full of that more so than the East. I guess we're not so familiar with that around here. Government owned land and being able to yeah, use they it. do harass um, small farmers around here, Virginia. Uh, like Joe Salatin is up up here in the Shenandoah Valley, talking about how FDA and stuff like that messes with small farmers all the time. Um, if he ever wanted to, uh, you know. Bunker down for a minute is like that would be a close one. Uh, I could see him kind of being our Bundy in this region, yeah. and creating the same kind of cause. Yeah, yeah, he has problems with yeah government agents sneaking onto his land, right? And saying that the methods that he uses are biological terrorism, right? So it's absolutely absurd. <laughs> um. Which, speaking of which, we should do a, a field trip out there. Polyface Farms. It's like a char tr trip out there. And he'll give his, he gives the, uh, the tours himself. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Done. Uh, so I think that was, uh, that covered our topics. Iran, Technocracy, Concentration Camps, Orient Civil War. 
Mm, yeah. De- liberals are definitely losing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they do have a ton of homeless people in their ranks. Oh, They're shit. indestructible. Those, well, you those just those offer them like a McDonald's and they'll join your He's a bolt cutter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the Russians, right? They had to like share guns. All right. <laughs> <laughs> one gets the ammo and one gets a gun. Whoever <laughs> dies first picks up the other person's piece. All right. Uh, so with that, thanks for listening. Stay liberated. Get off my property.